Welcome to Everyday Linux User. Now this month on I am looking at Anduin OS and so this video is my first impressions of Anduin OS because I've never actually used it before. So Anduin OS is made to look like Windows 11 but it's not like Ubuntu or Linux or Linux FX. It's not a complete ripoff of Windows 11. It's just the look and feel that looks like Windows 11. Now underneath the hood of Anduin OS you've got Ubuntu and it's you get the choice of which version you want if you go for the long-term support release you're basically getting uh, ubuntu 2404 and that gives you long-term support release the problem with that is the software center doesn't have flat packs and all that enabled and um, it's harder to install software i've installed the 1.3 version which is based on ubuntu 2504 the length of time that that is supported is till january next year not a problem for me because this is a month on. Once the month on is done, I will move on to the next distribution. But this gives me the latest look and feel for Anduin OS. And that's what I'm gonna be reviewing this month. Now, as you can see, uh, it does look like Windows 11. You've got a Windows 11 style wallpaper. You've got the Windows 11 style launcher. You've got a Windows 11 style system tray. And you've even got a weather thing in the bottom left corner. and for new users coming to Linux that want a Windows 11 look and feel, this is the sort of thing that they would go for. Now, personally, I prefer not to have a Windows look and feel to my um, Linux distribution. And I was asked during the week, why would anyone want to make their Linux look like Windows? Well, as they say, necessity is the mother of all invention. The fact that somebody has created this is because somebody else wants it. And... I can understand it to a certain degree like if you're, if you're coming from windows having everything in the same place as it was before kind of helps you now what it doesn't help with if you put this on your mom's pc or your dad's pc your grandparents pc and you say oh look i've installed this windows for you as soon as they try and find something that isn't quite where it was before they're going to get stuck it's okay if you're doing it for yourself because you know you've installed linux and you know that ultimately, whilst it looks like Windows, it isn't Windows. So I think I'm torn as to whether I like this sort of thing or not, but the way the Anduin developers have done it, they've done it in a very good way. It, 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 it actually looks okay and it functions perfectly well because it really is just Ubuntu with a Windows theming over the top. And I believe this is just one guy that's created this. Now there's lots of things online saying it was a Microsoft engineer that created it. I think that might not necessarily be true. Um, I think it might actually be a Chinese student that um, created this, but he's done a decent job, you know, of mimicking Windows, but not going where Ubuntu and Linux have in the past and make it a complete rip off of Windows. Now, when you install Anduin, it uses the old Ubiquiti installer. Now I installed um, Anduin as a dual boot and there's a dual boot guide that's now um, linked to this video uh, and that was released before this one. And I'm a bit late on my month on because I um, decided to do a Debian uh, review first and a Debian install guide first because there was a later version of Debian 13 out. So yeah, I'm gonna be spending a month on this. So this is my first impressions of Anduin. Uh, it does look like Windows um, to the point you've got desktop icons. As I said before, you've got the system tray, etc. And even when you press this menu here, you've got a Windows 11 looking feel to it. But it's not, it doesn't mimic it perfectly. It looks like it, but it doesn't, it's not a complete rip off. If you want to find your applications, you can go in there and you can search like that. You can type in the name of an application. So, for instance, if I search for LibreOffice, you can see LibreOffice is there. Um, if um, I want to um, find a, an application that's not there, for instance, if I look for the Brave browser, it will come under the software section. So whilst I haven't got it installed, I can now click this and it will bring up the software manager. And now I can just click install. And the other good thing about Anduin is flat packs are installed by default. So um, that is a good step, uh, and which is kind of also a strange thing because this is based on Ubuntu 
and if it's based on Ubuntu you might think that snaps would be the way it's gone but no it's it's gone for flat pack and I, I like that um, I think flat pack should be the standard uh, there's just more available on it for instance I've managed to install Chrome as you can see here and make that my default browser and I wouldn't be able to do that uh, within snap easily I'd have to go and download it from the Google website instead finding stuff in the menu is really easy to do and if I look at the apps that came installed not all these apps came installed a lot of them are just the GNOME apps and so you've got disks uh, this events came installed Firefox with the web browser I installed Chrome I installed Caden Live in fact I installed LibreOffice so LibreOffice wasn't installed either but you've got general um, tools now I installed OBS and OpenShot as well uh, but you've got all these other things here um, Rhythm Box I think was installed it might not have been but it's easy to install what you want essentially search for the application and you can see here if I want Steam it's under the software center here I can just click Steam here and it will take me to the software manager and I can install it from FlatHub and if it's available as a dev package it will also be under there as well where possible I always recommend installing FlatHub packages they're usually more up to date and because they're self-contained and they're not going to um, affect other parts of your system uh, and uh, I find they actually work better in most cases so I, I actually uh, really like flat packs so as I said before you got this weather icon in the bottom left corner and you can set where you are in the world just go into the settings here and it will let you change different things like the icons etc it comes with a file manager and it's, this is the standard GNOME Nautilus file manager uh, and I've got a guide showing how um, the GNOME file manager works so I'll link that to this video as well and you've got the software manager and that brings up the software manager and you can see it's very responsive it comes up very quickly um, LibreOffice I installed that I installed that I installed uh, if you want to connect to the internet you've got these icons down here and it's pretty much the same as it is for Windows I'm using a wireless connection but if I want to use Wi-Fi I just click here and choose my network uh, Bluetooth is available and works uh, your printer everything works from this search menu it's, it's a really good search menu so if I click printers here it's going to take me there and it automatically found my printer for me and whilst you're in here you can see all the other things you can set as well so you can change your screen display settings um, deal with sound power and things like that now you've got this wallpaper here which is obviously the windows look and feel but we can change that right click change background and you can switch between light and dark mode there's only two pictures in here you got the dark mode one you can go for the light mode one and so obviously if I go for the default here as well this makes it look like the lighter version of Windows and probably hurts some of your eyes but there you go that's what it looks like now if you want to add in your own pictures so if I go to my home folder here and if I go in here I can go for this one for instance and I can do set as background And there you go I've got my background I'm going to change it back to dark mode and there we have it now the way uh, the developers have made it look like Windows 11 they've installed a hell of a lot of GNOME extensions so for instance you've got the arc menu blow my shell clipboard indicator and you can customize your eye bus you've got dash to panel which is this thing down here uh, like dark theme switcher so you've got all these things here the open weather which is that removable drive menu so all these things here that's how they've made it look like Windows 11 it's as I said before I think it's okay it's if, if you want a Linux distribution that looks like Windows 11 but isn't Windows 11 and it doesn't go too far with it then Anduin seems to do the job okay and it doesn't look like there's too much it's basically taken Ubuntu and just added a couple of things like it's added flat packs in and it's added a few extensions so I'm kind of looking forward to this month on um, just to see how well Adwin works I've been using it for about a week thus far and it's worked perfectly fine I've not really hit any issues with it so we'll see how we go as the month goes on 
Anyway, that is the end of the video. Hit the like button if you enjoyed the video. Hit the subscribe button. And I'll see you next time on Everyday Linux User.